Otto Peterson. Hi, Otto Hello. playing the Stress Factory uh, tonight, right? Yeah, it starts for that up. Stretched out midget Vinnie Brand. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Otto. <laughs> hey, Jim. hey, Jim. How are you? Hey, Jim. Uh, you got shows tonight, two tomorrow, uh, uh, two Fridays, sorry, and uh, uh, wait, what day is today? Thursday. Okay. Thursday. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, this week's flying and, by. And I'm supposed to be judging a Halloween uh, costume thing or something. At the Stress something Factory? Other, yeah. He's making you do that, right? Well, yeah, I mean, it'd be it's fun. It's not good enough that you go, win. You know it's yeah. not fun. It's not fun? Yeah. No, you know it's not going to be fun. <laughs> Maybe I'll get bribed. Then he's forcing you to do it. Yeah. Uh, it should be good enough that you're uh, providing all the laughs for people. Let someone else do the fucking and thing. That, that makes awesome contest. You're you know? counting on one whore being dressed as a French maid. Oh. That's what you're counting yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something, you can put yeah, up with all the clowns <laughs> and the rodeo guys. Otto, what do you want? The lamb? You got your passport in your pocket. Oh, I don't like it. You never know. Yeah, I know. I might fucking pull a Scott Peterson. Just yeah, leave. Just Why do you have to get the hell out of here? To get in the fucking building. Uh, really? I don't have a driver's license. I don't drive. I'm a oh, non-driver. Right. Okay. I'm a non driver When was the last time you drove a car? I've never driven a car. Oh, that's right. We've done wow, this. Wow, that's kind of cool. I forgot about this. Is it? I have, mean, you, have, you, have, you, have you You never even tried like what a I friend? picture myself driving on the Pacific Coast Highway with a convertible. And, you know, it's like, it's like a, a movie scene. It's like, yes. I, I'd like to drive before I die. I picture Let you driving play. Jane Mansfield. <laughs> how do you go yeah. through life exist? without driving? How do you? Subways, you know, yeah, walk a lot. Yeah. Where, where'd you grow up? In Staten Island. But Staten Island, you need to kind well, of drive, right? I would take right? the bus to the ferry and then a the subway. Oh, that's exhausting. Uh, yeah, God. it was a 90-minute to get to Times Square <laughs> from where I live. <laughs> Hold on. Oh, that's a tough thing to wrap your brain around. Uh, We're making is. light of it. it. But yeah. never drove a car. That doesn't mean he stopped driving a year yeah. ago. This yeah, yeah. Yeah, this isn't 1910. Yeah. This is 2010. How, how like, crazy. How, like wow. what, what was the <laughs> reason? Like, everybody has I, a friend. I have, that a, I have a pogo stick. It gets me ready to go. <laughs> no, um, it's, it's, that's a good question. Yeah, was there reason? any reason? Uh, Never's a big one. Like, I've never yeah. sucked a cock. Yeah. Okay? <laughs> You're both missing out. <laughs> 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 Never. Um, I just wasn't uh, interested. I, at that time, I was very wrapped up in my act and doing street shows, and I just got around like that. Yeah, most kids at 15, that's all they wanted to do is get their yeah, first drive. Car. I couldn't yeah, wait to drive. A, yeah, was a big I just thing. wanted yeah. to hang out with magicians and street performers. And, yeah. That's amazing. George drives, though, right? George <laughs> that is was... driving. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I got to ask a stupid question. Yes. Did you ever get laid in a car? Um, I mean, yeah, I made out in a car, probably a hand job. It's really not. Mm. Yeah, but that's where you got your action when you were younger. Where else are you going to go? But you get your yeah. car, yeah. you go hotel rooms. I lived in residential I didn't have hotels. money for hotel rooms when I was 16, I like 17, 17, 18, 18, 18, yeah. I was making money. I was yeah. making 200 a day on the street. Jesus. That's because he wasn't uh, driving. I've known Jackie. How, we go back to the... A zillion uh, years. What? Or mid-70s? Late 70s? Well, I didn't start until like house. 70 years. The Rainy Night House, 1979. The Rainy Night House in Queens on... What was that? Union Turnpike? Union Turnpike. And 200 I remember and, sitting there and, and yeah. watching... Uh, this guy, and I said, there's not a funny bone in this guy's body. <laughs> and then the next time I came back, I said, you know, this guy, he's a little funnier now. Hmm. And it was fucking Paul Reiser. Oh. He wasn't even a little bit. But the, oh. Yeah. Wait, wait, first, you can't just jump past that. No, yeah. no, no. He, he Reiser just, he, just wasn't funny? But he, he probably was. I just wasn't sophisticated. You know, yeah. like oh. he was up there just, you know. Uh, rambling and I'm like, where, where, where the fuck are the jokes? You Eddie know, and then like six months later, jokes. it was funny. The first time I saw you, and I had, <laughs> God damn it, I haven't thought about this in 20 years, and I had it on a micro cassette, and I don't know what happened to it. Oh. I, 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 he looked like he'd be interesting, so I turned on the <laughs> micro cassette to, you know, for whatever reason, because I'm sitting with Rob Bartlett, and we're sitting there, and I had never seen Otto before, so I don't know his act from Adam, right? And neither at Bartlett. This is very in the very, very beginning, or 1979. So <laughs> fucking Otto gets up there. So you don't know what's part of somebody's act and what isn't. Mm. And there's a, an Asian girl sitting right in front of him. Oh, no. And <laughs> I don't know this is a mainstay of his act. So me and Bartlett were going to quit comedy that night because we thought this is off the top of his head. And it turns out his main thing. But he goes up there with the fucking dummy, and we're already peeing. And he goes... Uh, Blah, 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 blah. And all of a sudden, he just takes George and pushes George's face nose to nose in front of the girl and says, Excuse me, miss. Are my fucking shirts ready? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm telling you, on this micro cassette, you can hear me and Bartlett gasping for fucking air. And I, we, but it's something he's been saying forever. And I thought it was just off the top of his, oh my God. We said, We got to get out of comedy. Oh, and I've been laughing at him ever. He's just one of the funniest. I, the I just don't go for the salty talk. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't go for that salty, yeah. peppering in that salty language. 
garbage. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care for that. <laughs> I, I, I had to do some fucking phoning yesterday. This guy was really on my nerves. He was like, uh, he, he was wanting me to uh, do jokes about Greg Giraldo, and then and he's like saying, um, well, what do I feel about gays in the military? I go, I don't know. There's a war going on. What do you want, bits from me? Yeah, I was, maybe I was crazy. What show is that? Just some fucking stupid internet thing. <laughs> just couldn't. I'm so much more comfortable with you guys. Oh, what do you want to joke about Geraldo? I'm yeah. not saying that's off limits. I mean, he was a comic, but I mean, you know. What, are they, what were they trying that? to get? It was a terrible thing. I don't Let's know. Let's go back to you being comfortable. You don't yeah. seem very comfortable to me. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> we're, doing, um, we're doing a roast for um, Florentine, Florentine yes. Tuesday, and the money's going to go to the Greg's Survive. kids. Yeah, Next yeah, yeah. Tuesday, That's comics. Yeah. Uh, at comics. Uh, who else be... is on it? I'm on it. You're Everybody. on it. Everybody. I saw yeah, the lineup. Florentine, Everyone Jameson, you know. Uh, oh, is that going to be a bash fest? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you Just guys know mean. him too well. Mm -hmm. Just be mean as possible, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. Roast, yeah. Uh, you lived yeah. with him for uh, three years. Three years. So. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck your mother. Yeah. 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 Cunt. <laughs> <laughs> Live in it, boy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I lived with him for three years. He three years so... in that shithole, moldy fucking apartment. Got me my first paid gig in comedy. I love Florentine. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he's great. Who else so me and Jackie were in uh, Comedy's Dirtiest Dozen and the Aristocrats and a thing called Rules for Men. That's three films, fucking Look at underground us. movie star. Yeah, just the aristocrats. Yeah, is a yeah, great yeah. flick. Man. Yeah, I yeah. love that one. Great fun. I never knew it was going to get released. I thought we was just crapping around. Nobody, with a camp nobody order. knew. Yeah, no, you know, they came into your apartment with a with a camera, like, yeah. hey, you know, yeah. Yeah. Talk, talk about this. Professor yeah. said, "Oh, I got to put you in this movie because uh, you told me the joke thirty yeah. years ago." Yeah, I'm the aristocrats like, was great. I didn't even tell a joke. You know, yeah, I, no, just, okay. I just fucked around and talked and told a few jokes. I was against it. I didn't. I'm not. <laughs> really a joke teller and I don't find that joke that hilarious but he convinced me to do it because he said all the a-list stars were in it and what's well, you know it was a whole goof it was a whole fun thing yeah because it was a it was a, a fun thing to fuck around with a million years ago and in the movie I actually recreated what I, I decided I was gonna quit stand-up on the road because I, I thought I had a chance of getting doing more on the Stern show and I was working two days a week and Nancy said just stop going on the road and you'll be available and when I quit going on the road then I was available to be there five days a week and when I would made the decision I was at Zany's in Nashville and I said this is my last week I'm not fucking coming out on the road anymore so I got no. so drunk and I was telling the joke to somebody and when I got to the punchline I literally ran and slid on my belly you know in the in the shit and the diarrhea you know <laughs> <laughs> and I recreated that, but it, it was it was so much fun to tell that joke, and that the, they didn't go to the interesting. The interesting part of that was the the guy Legman with the big thick book that they talked about. Oh yeah, his his premise was that you are defined by what you find funny, which is a real interesting premise. And he had two huge joke books. He was a big collector. He was a madman. And the last joke on the last page was the aristocrats and i had been telling that joke for years before i discovered that was could the you, last joke because that uh, movie hasn't been out in a while could you like uh, bring in the audience a little more uh, it's an old vaudeville joke basically <clears throat> it's 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 just a ridiculous show and i laughed at the wrong thing for years <laughs> right. the wrong but, thing but, let, let me just finish. so yeah good so the bottom line is here's this aristocrats joke that's my favorite joke that i've been telling to people for, and this is like 1980 Hmm. And here it is. And he says, the, the following joke was told to me by a guy who was raised in squalor by two battling parents, but they stayed together for 40 years battling for the good of the children. And I'm like, <laughs> they just described my motherfucking childhood. And this is my favorite joke. It's completely, you know, <laughs> it, it made what is his premise absolutely on, on the money. And in the movie The Aristocrats, that old music, uh, the old magician, oh. told the Gershon Legman version of the joke, which was much shorter. And I think if it gets too long, it gets lost and gets crazy. But the bottom line is, a guy, when I tell this joke, I, and I, they said it in the Aristocrats, when I tell this joke, I say that uh, the guy goes to a low level show business agent. And I say, when I tell this joke, I always picture Joe Franklin's office. And in the movie, they actually cut the Joe Franklin's yeah, office. Joe Franklin. And what's so funny is Joe Franklin had an office where you could hardly walk in because it's all full of crap. I know. And then he moved. And I'm like, how could they possibly move? And he moved to a different place. He's a hoarder. It's exactly the same. <laughs> it's They moved all that crap, right? <laughs> but the guy goes and says, this is for the audience. So they, yeah. they hear the joke. He says, uh... Like, do you want to tell it? You don't want to tell it. You don't like that. No, I can't. The guy, <laughs> got stuff here. <laughs> the guy goes to a show business agent. He says, I, I got an act. I'd like you to look at the act. And the guy says, well, there's no room there in my office. Come out in the hall. So they go out in the hall. 
And he stands there, and the guy goes around the corner. He comes back around the corner. He goes, and he takes out his dick and starts whacking his dick. And he goes back around the corner. All of a sudden, he comes back around the corner with his wife. And he's got his dick. And then all of a sudden, he rips off her blouse and starts playing with her tits. And he's playing with his dick. You know, and he goes back around the corner. And then all of a sudden, he comes around the corner. And he's got his mother and his father with him. You know, and he comes out, and they're French kissing and making out. And and his father starts fingering his mother, and he starts he's jacking off, and he's playing with his wife. Just and all of a sudden. And they go back around and then they come back around and it's the grandmother and the mother and it's the guy and his wife and they're all naked and the kids come out and the guy takes his shit and then takes his son and pushes his son's face into shit and then pisses on the back of his son's head and his and his sister starts playing and they're all waddling in the shit and waddling in the shit and all of a sudden they go da he says the agent what do you think and the agent says well, it's different he says, what do you call yourself and he says the aristocrats <laughs> which is just that's stupid. That's so stupid. But they get into the whole thing yeah. with you know kids dying and everything. You know, well, the no. joke is told differently by a million different guys. That's, think, that's the key to the joke. Yeah, if, with the punchline being the same every time. It's, it's very the study long. Of it has a dynamic yeah. though where you'll be like, "All right, where's he going?" But yeah. then the longer it gets after that, it gets funny again. It's like a shaggy dog story. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's so, like how much patience are you? You know, how much you're gonna invest with somebody? Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. How, how are how you on a car ride there? where you want to eat up a half? Hour, you know. <laughs> yeah, right, right. It's it's yeah. well done. The, the documentary on the joke. Because well I think done. Gilbert's was really fucking twisted. Oh man, he really went off on it. <laughs> and then, yeah, he's <laughs> fucking like, the boy. <laughs> like yeah, yeah. Gilbert's uh, performance was awesome in that. It was great. Oh yeah. He Such fucking. <laughs> he was. Wasn't he like the first? <laughs> What's wrong, Jimmy? <laughs> Jimmy's crazy. Jimmy, what did I do? I don't know, just makes me laugh. What's, What's wrong? Because I don't think you remember the magician before when Jackie said like the magician. I went oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's just agreeing. It was just. I was oh. I had no concept of who the magician. Was. No. You catch up later. You know, yeah, it was just process it later. Oh, that like, was such a great. Trying to get along in society. <laughs> 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 He's comfortable here. Yeah, He's very comfortable. Very just, comfortable. Jimmy just doesn't believe a fucking thing I say. I just Nothing. love. I, I love used to promise dinners with people. Yeah, we'll no, have dinner. Uh, so many. Fu <laughs> it, 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 the, he's the greatest dismisser of things. <laughs> hey, I really love you. Okay, thank okay. you. Uh, okay. Yeah. Before they were finished, he's nodding and dismissing them. <laughs> I I feel more comfortable with scorn than praise. I just I don't know what's coming next when somebody praises me. It makes me uncomfortable. Yeah, you yeah know? I don't know how to react. Yeah, it's a lot of times right, it's know, just like yeah, it's thanks. Mothering. It's like. Oh, creepy, thank you, yeah. thank you. Mm -hmm. And or then just the, say good. I really enjoyed your stuff and then just leave me alone I yeah because the the multiple compliment is very uncomfortable because you got to go yeah, oh yeah. thank you oh, thank God. you you go thank you and then it's something else and you go oh no i really appreciate that yeah. Oh, thank you, thank you. Not that it happens starts, all the time, but Starts me. to water it down. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's like, know. after a while, you're just like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> I really appreciate the concise compliment, and then just leave me alone, move on. Yeah. You know, well, because so space. often, somebody say, you were so great. I really loved you. Thank you. You know, it was really good. Yeah. No, thank you. Yeah, that was yeah. Right. Except for you know, the, yeah, and then yeah. all of a sudden oh, yeah, they yeah, get to great. the but the but this the real reason why I, they're talking yeah, to right, you. Right, right. Or else they'll say you didn't. You left out my favorite joke, and you just had what you consider a great set, and then they'll fucking say, "Well, you didn't do the one thing that I came here to hear." Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, I fucking ruined your night. That's <laughs> <laughs> all. Can I turn the sound back on and go up. <laughs> do, do the one joke for you. So long ago in the Fort Lauderdale <laughs> comic strip, we used to. Everybody was the same. It was, it was in like '79 and '80. There was no. In the very beginning, there was no headliner and middle and opening act. There was three guys did a show at the comic strip in Fort Lauderdale. And we do the show. Oh, Joe and we get, it, it, No, no, this is oh. Joe Mullen, long oh, before okay. Bellazzo said oh, it. Oh, Joe Mullen, yeah. They, Bob the, Woods used to always talk about that Mullen oh, okay. character. They, yeah. <laughs> Joe Mullen was the all-time great guy. He's the guy that threw the guy out and then threw his wheelchair out on top of him. Oh. <laughs> and... And he's <laughs> and he's the compassion. Wow! Did he really? Oh, like, oh the fucking stories about the guy. But, but we get done with the show, and we'd be sitting in the bar, the three comics, and the people would be filtering out. And it was always so fucking uncomfortably great because you'd be sitting there, and people always would like one guy or two guys, and maybe not all three, and they go. Oh, you were so great. Oh, you were so great. And then look at you. <laughs> and sometimes they'd love me, and sometimes they'd like the other two guys, and I'd be too dirty, and they'd like, 
Look at me and just uh, that dude's they so walk fucking by and you're all so uncomfortable, man. Compliment the other two and then just, just stare you stare like, at you and walk. <laughs> oh god, that's <laughs> fucking lump of shit. Unbelievable. Yeah. You stunk. <laughs> but a lot of times they they just don't recognize me because they were watching the puppet. But I'll take it personally. Like they won't even know that I was just on stage. I remember one time we were in the <laughs> stare at George. Me and Otto were in the parking lot one time in Delaware. And uh, we actually hooked up with girls at, at that gig. Uh, I remember with, with Wendy and the other chick. Ooh, in the other girl. Girl. names? Yeah. Wow. It's, it's the only time you and I ever fucking hooked up with chicks together. I was just to say. It's wow. <laughs> but we're must in the, have been good. We're, 1988. We were in the yeah. parking lot, and this girl comes up to us, and she had um, her, there was something wrong with her head. <laughs> because her fucking, literally her hairline started <laughs> almost in the middle of her skull. She had like a fucking, almost a Neanderthal ridge. Too much fucking forehead. Oh, yeah. she was oh, terrible. Wow. It was a drive-in movie. But, uh, <laughs> we were, uh, she came up and she goes, uh, I liked you to me. She goes, I liked you a lot. Um, you were really funny. And I don't think she knew. And she goes, I liked you better than the headliner. Oh. But she was, she liked that, but she goes, he was just too dirty. I think he's more of a guy's come. And I forget what she said to you. And you said, well, I kind of like you too, except for your forehead. It was too big. <laughs> <laughs> and, and she took her palm and she. Palmed Otto in the forehead. Hide <laughs> <laughs> yeah. your fucker. No. Yeah, you didn't have a car. We did, yeah, exactly. Yeah, we were gonna fuck her. <laughs> we, we, we did pick up girls, and we were in the and, and the girl had talked about her grandfather committing suicide, and, and he had he had uh, jumped out a window, and a it was very sad. Yeah. So we're in her kitchen, and we're getting ready to go into the jacuzzi, and there's a picture of an old man. On the refrigerator, and Otto goes, "Hey, is this the one who tossed himself out the window?" <laughs> I, it's I, it's I, one I, of my top five biggest laughs yeah. ever. <laughs> and you still the one who tossed himself out the window. And you guys still got action after that, dude. That's I think pretty amazing. I think he, yeah. wow. we, we, oh, that's we, we fooled around. With, we fooled around with them in the, in the jacuzzi, and I was doing a lot better than he was. And, and he goes, "Look at those two. They're like Melrose Place, and we're like." Meet the press. <laughs> he was on fucking fire oh. that night. Holy it was more fun shit. making you laugh than trying uh, to get a nut. Oh, oh did I funny. fucking howl that night. <laughs> that was it. Was the toss is the word? <laughs> of course. Is this the one who tossed himself tossed out the himself. window? Oh, God. What an excellent choice of a word. Oh, yeah. God yeah. damn! It was a short <laughs> bereavement. <laughs> how do you guys pick up girls? And how does it get to? By the way, how do you my, get my father committed, my grandfather <laughs> committed suicide. <laughs> I don't know how it got. I honestly don't remember the process. I wouldn't remember the night if it wasn't for those horrible moments. That's, wow. that's yeah. what made it memorable. Yeah. Really. <laughs> for those terrible moments. A they were like an hour was, south of fucking. Was uh, it a nice jacuzzi. Yeah, it was okay. Yeah. It was a pool. It was a pool. Yeah. A jacuzzi. Were they really in their underwear or naked or what? I don't remember. I, 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 do I don't remember. remember. Nah, I thought I'd remember. We were all in the jacuzzi, right? At some point. Yeah, I think so. And you guys were just chatting while me and her were fooling around. That was fucking her name was Sheila, the girl I fooled around really? with. Yep, Sheila. I remember her last name too. I don't say. Yeah. Wow. Wow. You know, Bob Woods was Bob Woods was so huge. Yeah. he must have weighed <clears throat> like three fifty. Another comic, obviously. Yeah, yeah, but but he used to get girls, and it was amazing because oh, yeah. he was so gruff and so disgusting and so ornery, and the, that place, Mister Rips upstate. Yeah. You know? So him and Jim Myers are up. <laughs> it, uh, this place, Mr. Rips Myers, this is Myers favorite story. It's not even that great a story. It's just so odd. If you picture this huge man in the front seat with a girl <laughs> and Myers is in the back seat trying to fuck this girl <laughs> and all of a sudden out of a clip, this guy, this 350 pound man says to the woman he's with. Get your finger out of my asshole! <laughs> <laughs> That's not a great story. <laughs> that was Myers, Myers couldn't believe it. This huge man is lucky not to have a stuck a finger he's and he's yelling at him. <laughs> must he have a long it. finger. I don't even know how they, she could have uh, negotiated it. You know? Oh, it's so great. Oh, fuck. Yeah. He was like and you Ralph know him, you know it's like true. He was like Ralph Yeah, he was. He had he would, he would blow his stack. He was hysterical. <laughs> you was hysterical. Will, you will believe this story. Yeah. You guys won't believe this story, but you will believe this story. He was so big that when he was in the front seat, in, I mean, in, you know, in, in the passenger seat of my Volvo, he his legs he took up the entire area. And we're coming back from Mister Rips, and he had so many problems, so many problems, and he had a bottle of Heineken. 
And <clears throat> he's the kind of guy the cop would pull you over and he'd say, let's kick his ass. You know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. So he's sitting there. Grab his gun. And we're driving. <laughs> and we're, and right. And we've been, we've gone to gigs for years. So we were done talking. We've talked about everything forever and ever now. So we're just driving and driving and driving. So we're on our way back from Mr. Rips. And Woods is sitting there with like a half a bottle of Heineken. <laughs> and he's sitting there and oh. And all of a sudden, he he starts to deeply sob, really, and <laughs> and freaking out, and and he all of a sudden he's crying, and he hits the window to put the window down, and he pulls, but the window didn't go all the way down, and he throws the Heineken <laughs> out the window, but the window <laughs> isn't completely open, and oh, the bo Heineken bottle bounces off the window, and. Caroms around, but he's so fat and big that it lands so it's still upright somewhere in some of the crevasse. He's sitting there, and a few minutes go by, and all of a sudden he's, he starts giggling and laughing. And he grabs the Heineken bottle that's still got beer and takes a sip out of it. He turns to me and says, Sorry, pal. What <laughs> <laughs> the entire gavin like, of emotion? I was like, I almost drove off the fucking road. It was an amazing play. I, I assume he didn't make it. No, he's gone. He's what gone. What did he die of? And, and I, remember, I never you know met him. I knew his name. You know yeah, I knew who he was. And I, I never met him. He was a very, very big guy, and he. He was just a mess, and he collapsed on stage in Maryland. And they yeah. took him to the hospital and cut him open, and they just sent him back to his room to die. There was just it wow. was, he it was just surgery. It was too much stomach to cut through to get to whatever it, organ. It was just was really, wow. really yeah. What year was that? Like, it must have been like early nineties, eighty nine or oh, something. Oh, before I got into yeah, college, I went from was his it? wake to replacing him at some gig in in Long Island. It was the hardest thing I ever did. I'd never been to a wake in my life, and oh. and it was just it was so sad. It was just bizarre. Bizarre, yeah, you know, and then having to go do a show—it was awful. We loved him. He was like our fucking—he was the guy you always look forward to doing a gig with. He'd laugh all the way there and all the way back. The so first terrific. night I ever worked with the gang, I, I had met Minervini and those guys, and they convinced me to come over to Dixon's White House Inn. Yeah, and went over to Dixon's White House Inn like in 1979, in in the beginning of 1979, and Dixon. Had his face surgically changed to look like Richard M. Nixon, and That's uh, fucked up. And he just was what? A, what? He, he just, oh, I remember that. And guy. he had yeah, a place yeah, called okay. Richard M. Nixon's White House Inn, and it, you know, and he, he, that was his place, and he and had a variety show. The reason we started, the, we wound up doing a comedy show on Long Island in Huntington at Cinnamon was mm -hmm. that Dixon wouldn't pay us. He oh. wouldn't give us any money. So they convinced me to come over. So I came over, and it's the first night I met Woods, and the only thing Dixon would give us was free booze. So here I'm with Bob Woods, oh, with two drunks, and I'm meeting him for the first time. So we're sitting there at the bar long after the show's over, drinking and drinking, and Dixon's trying to get us, you know, he wants us to leave. So Dixon takes a bus box, and he's going around, and he's cleaning up the tables, you know? And I'm sitting there with Woods, and I said... I think we gotta go, Bob. He says, why? I said, I'm so drunk, now the fucking bus boys are starting to look like Nixon. <laughs> <laughs> he said, you're all right, pal. And we were best friends until he died. Best friends until we died. Fuck. Yeah, that was a bad idea, giving him a free liquor as opposed to a uh, pay. I mean, he could do some damage. Him and sure. Hawthorne would drink so much. You and remember Hawthorne, Dave Hawthorne? Yeah, Hawthorne, the walrus. Man. He'd grab his dick and go, walrus, walrus. Fucking and, and Friedman, um, uh, Silver Friedman at the Improv hated us. Because we would just be laughing. We didn't kiss her ass for spots. And we would we'd be laughing. She goes, can you guys keep it down? And Woods is like, it's a comedy club. I'm laughing. She's like, you have to laugh, laugh like a horse. And then he started, that set him off again for 10 minutes of laugh. Oh, he just a fucking. Uh, and she liked all those douchey little Paul Reiser uh, kiss ass comics that would fucking, you know, suck up to her and do her little bidding. It was such a t fucking douchey Woods and Hawthorne. I, the the yeah. night I opened Governors, I was like, I walked in the men's room and, and Woods quoted this for 10 years. I walked out and said, Jesus fucking God, are you donkey smoking pot in the men's room? The smoking pot opening night in, in Governors. Governors. The smoking pot in the men's room just oh, yeah? to break my ball. They didn't want to get high. They just want to fuck with me, you know? Oh, man. <laughs> What a, what a fucking world you guys live in. Oh, he was a character. Yeah, that movie, Ryder P.I. I mean, does that exist if somebody wanted to see who Woods was? Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. That absolutely exists. You could get that, right? Yeah. I'm sure Ryder P.I. Yeah. I remember hearing about that years Stern, ago. Stern, Howard Stern's in it, and yeah, every yeah. comic yep. that was anything in that I was time. the voice of the, uh, of the fat dummy. There was a dummy that if you pulled the string, it insulted you <laughs> so you wouldn't eat. But Jim Myers had a great story about yeah. that. Jim Myers was in the movie, and his kid was in the movie. His hmm. seven-year-old son was in the movie. So he said, Jack, you know, 
how often is this going to happen that I'm in a movie and my son is in the same movie? I got to go for it. So he rented himself a limousine to take himself to the to the screen. I was on on the road, so I wasn't at the screening, but there was a screening at some at some theater in uh, Long Island, and everybody went to it. <laughs> and Myers said to me. The movie was so bad, he said it was worth the 150 bucks for the limo to have tinted windows on the way. Wow. <laughs> the way <laughs> it's really, but every, it's a who's who. It's everybody yeah. ever met. You know, yeah. Mulroney and Minamini. Mulroney was and, the main star, right? right? And Nelson, Bob Nelson. Bob Nelson, right. Wow. Where's, Ma where's Klaus Myers? <laughs> I haven't seen him in years. That's, Jim Myers out in Los Angeles. Is he? Mulroney. Is he, is That's the writing? one we know, right? John, John Mulroney. Yeah. John, yeah. We, we interviewed him years ago. No, he looks like not. shit. Gun nut. He's is crazy. he all right? Oh, is he? Well, yeah, he's okay. He does. He, he's yeah, he's got radio. radio now. He's shit. in radio now, up in Albany again. Yeah, oh, is he's he in radio in again. Out. Yeah, in Good. and out. In Wait, and is out. the same guy I'm thinking of? Yeah, he's a funny guy, man. Big guy, funny guy. Very yeah. funny. Very yeah, yeah. great at crowd work. Yeah, very okay. fast. I watched. Guy. I did a police benefit with him, and I watched him do 45 minutes of crowd work with. I've never seen anybody work an audience like that. He was fucking brilliant. Yeah, people. You see, he's hours and hours of no material. Yeah, but he doesn't need it. He's unbelievable. He's unbelievable. Hmm. He's a good guy, a good character. No, you never seen him? No. no. Yeah, another Pips act. Pips was, you know, I you had to be good to survive yeah. Pips. That crowd was just Really horrible. brutal? Oh, yeah. <laughs> the Gleason's gym of comedy. Movies. I worked at Pips. <laughs> 20 years after I worked at Pips, I met Freddie Stoller. Oh. And you know Freddie Stoller, the, the skinny, you know, very low-key guy. I mean, he, he, he saw came. UFOs? Is that the guy who saw UFOs? Fred Stoller, he's on He was on Seinfeld. Seinfeld. Yeah, he's, he's oh. A, oh, I got a copy of that Pips thing that you did for Garvey. Oh really? The last hunt. laugh? Yeah, with Woody Allen's in it and Danny oh, Aiello. Oh, that yeah. was great fun. Yeah, I got. I'll burn a copy for you. I'm sure, I, I'm sure I you don't would love have to one. see that. Yeah, it's so, good. so uh, I I meet Fred Stoller and I I Pips was a, a two six pack ride from from Oyster <laughs> Bay. I was so drunk by the time I got there. So I go to work at Pips and my album, my first comedy album, came out. You know, which was an exciting thing to have an LP, and I sold five albums. <laughs> For like, you know, five bucks a piece or something like that. Or No, I sold 15. In, in the two shows, on the two nights, I sold 15 albums, which was an extra 75 bucks. And I probably made 50 bucks or 100 bucks. So this yeah. was like double. That's a big I night. I was like, holy shit, I'm going to make so much. I never sold 15 albums. To this day, I don't think I ever <laughs> sold 15. Just, but I must have been so excited. I must have done a good sell job. And they never had me back. Really? And they never had me back to Pips. And 20 years later, I Fred, meet Fred Stolen and goes, oh, yeah. He says, you're the guy they wouldn't have back to Pips because he drank too much. <laughs> oh. And I was yeah. like, what a bad... That fucking place was a hellhole of drugs <laughs> yeah. and smack and yeah. coke. And I, and I drank too you much. You drank too much. For that a place. badge of honor to not wow. be... You know, it's like you can't come in here. You're too crazy. <laughs> like, wow. Who, was, uh, who came up with you guys when you were doing Pips? Who else was... Jenny... Jenny, Richard Jenny was there a lot. Mm. Mulroney, mm. Um, a guy named Rich Triola, wow. still around. That was that was even a little bit later, early. Yeah. When, who the hell was? Well, in this, it was Rodney and those guys in the '60s. David Brenner was best friends with the owner George Schultz. George Schultz, who yeah, came George up, yeah. Star. Yeah. Mm. God, I remember. And there was mafia guys everywhere around there. They, were, they killed the guy yeah. next door. Really? This guy, Frank Rubino. And his son, <laughs> Rocco, was murdered. And I was talking to him 10 minutes before they killed him. Holy yes. shit. He was renovating the place. And Holy he had shit. that white shit on the windows when they're, yeah. you know, when they're doing construction. He goes, yeah, I don't, I'm going to knock that wall down and put a fucking bar over there. <laughs> and then, like, 10 minutes later, my friend Andrew Lederer comes over to me. He goes, they just killed Rocco. <laughs> and, and I go, and walk, I only walked like 10 steps. And but it's not a bit. This yeah, is, no, this is he had 11 shit. bullet holes in him and one, the last one in his throat. And he was like foaming blood coming out of, out of his <laughs> And he was dead. And then the, the uh, FBI was there all night writing down license plates and shit. <laughs> and, uh, wow. <laughs> and he left. <laughs> That's so Ro fucked Rocco uh, and his father was named Frank Rubino, and he used to carry a hand grenade in his leather coat. He <laughs> showed it to me. Hand grenade. Yeah, he goes, everybody's got guns. I gotta fucking blow up my enemies. <laughs> oh, I went, man. oh, man. He was a frightening guy. <laughs> what a nut. And he was found in Coney Island a week later. 
beaten and his balls smashed with a hammer oh. and shot in the head. I can and this was the Wild and, West. Uh, what was, happened with the grenade? Uh, someone, yeah. someone took that. Not a no, chance they, to pull up the jump you're on beating him. the hell out of somebody. You know. Yeah. They, uh, these were fucking scary people, man. Wow. I, and then there was the the worst punch or best punch I ever saw. was a, There was this guy, Fat Anthony, who was just kind of <laughs> like the overseer of the block. He didn't work for any particular restaurant or anything. And it was like in the middle of the summer during the day, and it was this drunk Jewish guy <laughs> who was just going into every business like with a Budweiser and just, you know, flirting with the girls and just being a jerk, but not really out of line. And he was leaning on a car and drinking a, a, um, a bottle of Budweiser. Fat Anthony, his hand came from, like, Florida, and it was, like, the size of the screen, and it just... He drove the bottle into his teeth, and the punch followed through, and it was just a sickening sight. And me and Mulrooney saw the whole thing. We went, he's gonna, Anthony's going to do something. And he then punched then the, the bottle just, into his teeth? Yeah, just but with a, a hand the size of a microwave oven. <laughs> and then just, bam, and then just collapsed on the ground, and uh, nobody saw nothing. No, he just laid there. You just and the, the guy was never the same. We saw him like six months later, and he was like, you know, just a fucking old nervous <laughs> tick. Crazy neck of the woods. What a punch. It that was disgusting. Is, fuck, those are the old days where, like, you'd always, you were constantly that, reading in the paper about, you know, a Joey the Horse uh, the, the Rabini. The bottle exploded and, and into dust. There was nothing left of it. It was just a, the but, the You wonder the if these places Long really Island. existed, oh. and this is, and there it is. Well, yeah, you know, yeah. Fat yeah. Anthony had enough of him and his oh. fucking flooding with the girls. <laughs> had enough of him. That, that <laughs> show that we did, that was, that was great fun. They, would, they did a movie about... Uh, Doing a show to raise money to save a club, but they did the movie to raise money to save the club. It was kind of show within a show within a show. It was yeah. great. And at the end, they said, they asked me to go up and tell some dirty jokes so they could shoot from Colin, the outside in it too. to run uh, uh, credits to run right. the yeah. credits on. Yeah. yeah, Colin Quinn was in it, and Woody Allen and Pat Cooper. Well, Pat Cooper's not in it he because they, they shot him. Big pussies in it. Well, they shot Pat Cooper, and he stood there, and and he worked to Woody Allen and Danny Aiello, and and broke balls and broke balls and broke balls. I said, all right, Pat. Do it again and face us. He was like, oh, I just did it. Wow. I just did it. I'm not going to do it again. Fuck you. I just did the whole thing. It, 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 Pat, we'll make it a Cooper. movie. We got to do it. You know? yeah. <laughs> the payoff yeah. is Woody Allen actually does stand up like for the first time in forever. And it's just so cool to see him. You know, just mm. grab a mic and, and do he, anything. And he watched us. Yeah. It was great. You wow. Know? Like, the, the huh. Mike, Michael Green is cinematographer for the last 20 years is the reason they got Woody there. And plus, he was good friends with Ray Garvey. Garvey knew Pips. everybody. And uh, Michael, Michael Green went up and said... So Woody, what would you think of Jack? He said, "He's very funny, but he's he's not my cup of tea." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not his cup of tea. I'll take huh? that is some Obviously kind of not Asian. Yeah, put Chinese glasses on. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Milk is but, but what's so funny? I went up there and told jokes so they could run the credits, right? So I did like about ten minutes of jokes, and while we're doing, I don't know if you remember, while we're finishing the show, you know, more and more people showed up, and some of the guys from The Sopranos came walking in. And what's his what's his name? Uh, Tony played a clarinet nude with a lollipop in my asshole. <laughs> I know, perfect Peter Laurie. What, what, what's uh, what's like Tony's the name? The, for, the, the, Sirico. Tony Sirico Sorry, yeah. comes in. Ah, sure. So I get off after doing ten minutes of jokes, and I come over, and and Sirico comes up to me and says, "Jack, you know you you're really fucking scary." <laughs> I said, "Sirico, you play the scariest guy maybe on television ever, and in real life you're even scarier." Yeah. And I told a few cock jokes. He said, no, no, you're really fucking scary. <laughs> what a fucking, fucking oddball! What, what did he mean by that? Because my jokes were so dirty. Oh. He thought, he thought that was scary. I'm like, wow, what, what is your up. what is your scale? Yeah, that's of, you not know? scary. That's so wow. funny. <laughs> that was a fun. That was a fun thing. That was yeah. a great thing. Um, it, yeah, it's it's where it's uh, it's called the Last Laugh. My friend Glenn Miller got me a copy of it. It's it's it was just great seeing Pips. Again. The musician? No, 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 oh. no, not the band leader. No, <laughs> the family <laughs> band leader. Yeah. I heard about that. Band. Yeah, yeah. You get the hell out of here! <laughs> Spitting corn on him. Whatever happened to Fat Anthony? I don't know. You know, the, the, the I don't name became know. more Russian, and when you go back oh, there, okay. you, I, I try and look for a familiar face, like going, like when you go back to your old neighborhood and you somebody you recognize. I don't you recognize, recognize the Jew there. with the bottle in his mouth. Yeah, yeah, yeah he's still there. <laughs> he's a statue. Still there. <laughs> what is what, uh, what is uh, Pips now? Is it still there? It's or a no? sushi uh, store. Yeah. Does it look the same or no? It's exactly the same. Oh, I walked wow. in there and I just got creeped out and I left. 
Huh. It was like they kept raising the rent, and it was only so many seats, and they couldn't keep 50 raising seats, the cover. 50 seats, right, or something? Yeah, they couldn't keep raising the cover, and they couldn't keep raising the drink prices. It had to close, you know? Hmm. It was, But it was there. That's it was like the bad. first comedy club ever in America, you know? It's unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah, it was like 1962. They I only worked there a few Jesus. times, but it was a rough room. Mm -hmm. Definitely a rough There weren't room. comedy clubs before 62? Yeah, it was, be in theaters no, and that, stuff? That and the Ice House in California sure. opened like the same like month, or like, there's hmm. like... One of them opened a week or two. Oh, early. is that how close? They just had a huge anniversary of the Ice House. Yes. I didn't yeah. know that. I didn't know that either. I, I thought the Ice going. House was like a recent in Not real no. recent. But. I heard that's a cake audience. That, uh, clubs won't take a, a tape that was filmed there because everybody that ever went on stage killed there. Really? So I was so just going to say, I killed yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> I did okay. I didn't kill. I had you a mediocre set. Really? No. Oh, well. <laughs> oh, Jimmy. Yeah. You ought to comedy it's... what flash dance was to welding. <laughs> <laughs> we should take a quick break here, man. These guys, I, I love the stories. Uh, we got Jackie Martling in studio, Uncle Vinny's Comedy Club, Staten Island, one show Saturday, and also Jokeland.com. Jokeland.com. And then we got Otto, who's just fucking killing. Otto's making Jimmy laugh, which is making me laugh. There's a whole weird thing <laughs> going on here. <laughs> fucking Otto. And, and, and then you text when he does not la never laughs exactly what you're saying. It's the, it's always something else. Yeah, but, yeah. Which is fun. Frank, Frank, Frank. <laughs> he writes got, his own tagline in his head and <laughs> yeah, laughs. Yeah, at yeah that. exactly. Otto's got the big gig at the Stress Factory, Vinny's Club in New Brunswick, yeah. New Jersey, tonight through Saturday. Exactly. Yeah, we're both working for Vinny's. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see that comp. I would. I think they'd be worth it to go see the uh, the co the costume contest. I want to see you judge one of them. Oh yeah. Just so yeah, I know yeah. how painful that would be. Yeah, you're oh, not. God. You're not into that, Otto. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I know you don't want to say it. Oh, let the puppets say something. Yeah, right. Put George on the phone. George. Dress up. Uh, <laughs> oh, and they kept trying to get me to say something bad about Dunham. You know, it's like, don't you hate Dunham? What well, radio no, show? Said, what fucking cornball internet the show? The club is it? set it up. The guy just called me at home uh, on oh. my cell phone and just, you know. What show, man? I, I, I don't know. Have, have, find, out from, find out from Vinny. Yeah, we'll yeah find out. some horrible internet. Why is Vinny thing? making you do internet? Fucking shows. I have to pump business, I, I guess. I don't know. He's got a nice house. He doesn't need to pump yeah. business anymore. <laughs> Does he? So on the virus. Series XM. We got to talk about this on the air. Yeah, Anthony, uh, we got to bring this up on the air. We got uh, Jackie. The joke yes. man in studio and Otto and George were, well, just Otto. George is Otto, uh, back home, I guess, there's right? There's a story. Yes. I don't know if you told me or oh, somebody Otto. told me about uh, uh, the, 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 the gist of it is Jesus weed. Do you remember that story about getting pulled over and, then have, and having this, like, homegrown pot? Do you, does that ring really about That's not enough of a, you know, <laughs> you haven't narrowed it down enough. <laughs> hey, I, the, the, what I heard was that the, the guy... You got pulled over and you had like an ounce of pot right there, and then and uh, I got pulled over. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. And go the ahead. cop was like, "What? What's that? Oh man, it's pot. I'm lost. I'm so fucking stuck." You were just honest with the guy and like talked your way out of it by just saying, "Look, if you're not a girl with big tits, being like brutally honest is your only chance of getting away with it." But then you said, <laughs> "You said to the cop that it's we call it Jesus weed. It's homegrown." He goes, "What do you? What's Jesus weed mean?" He goes, "You smoke it and you pray you get high." <laughs> and then the guy said, "All right, you guys are comedians. Open a trunk. If I don't find any more grass, I'm going to let you go." That that doesn't ring a bell. That does not, you know. But Legend. so many stupid <laughs> yeah. things happen that you know. But that's too good a story. I yeah. Mean, yeah. But I'm not going to say it didn't happen because yeah. I want the story to keep getting yeah, told. That's a good story. Well, Jackie was just telling us when he knew he had a drinking problem, yeah, and you brought we, up something. It, we were was... talking about d drinking. <clears throat> we we used to drink on our way to go to drink. Uh -huh. So if you're going to a bar or going to a gig or something like that. Uh, we would bring beer. It was normal. For the drive, it was normal for, to drive around yeah. with a beer between your legs as you're driving and just drink. Not thinking, like, what the fuck am I going to do with this if I get pulled over? Right. Like, what am I going to Where am I going to put I this? I could drive along and, and take a beer <clears throat> and open it with another beer upside down. Oh, yeah, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. easily. I mean, that was yeah. just... Tell the story when you knew you had a drinking problem. <laughs> well, and that was probably years before, but um, anytime you, you're going out, We'd always want to be on time because we wouldn't want to, you know, miss happy hour. And, um, God forbid. You know, and I would always get the happy hour and then ask for, you know, a couple of extra drinks so you'd have something, to, so you wouldn't have to wait for the waiter to come to the table and take your order. You know, all these yeah. little tricks. Yeah. You thought they were tricks. Hmm. But I would have a beer, 
ready to go. You know, I'd, I'd open a beer and when we were getting ready to leave. And very often your wife isn't ready. I'm like, what, what are you doing? What are you doing? So I'm standing there sipping my beer and sipping my beer and she's not ready yet. And all of a sudden my beer is half gone. And I'm like, well, fuck, this isn't enough beer to get me somewhere. And I can't, no. I'm not going to bring an extra one in my pocket. I don't want to piss her off. Hmm. So I would go downstairs and finish the beer I was drinking and put it in the refrigerator, the empty, because I'll take care of it later and take hmm. it, get another beer out. And I mean, she's two floors away, but just to be careful... I'd go off and, and pop the pop top and come up. <laughs> she wouldn't know. She so went I'd be on my second beer. one yeah. and we'd be on the way, you know. Oh, God. Yeah. Damn. And it was and it was very funny because we <laughs> never I mean, every time you got done with dinner or whatever, it, they, and then they'd come around with the coffee. And I would never, ever have a cup of coffee. No. I would you know, I would have another drink. The last now. the last time I ever drank, I was uh at a christening in, in May of 2001, and wow. we we're at this christening, and the waitress came around, and it was a real low-level christening. So she had the 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 coffee thing in one hand, and a and a you know a pitcher of beer in the other hand. You know, it's not the classiest joint, you know. And she's coming around, and she's you know filling up the coffee and filling people's beers, and I pushed my beer glass back and put my coffee cup in front of me and nancy looked at me like she was sitting with a fucking alien <laughs> yeah who, and she who said what are you doing i said i'm done wow just like she, that she said what are you talking about i said i'm done and and that was it that really? was it what what clicked in like your the head? Sight I, of the I, I, I had gone to he was memphis. done drinking beer out of mugs he started huh. coffee yeah. cups. <laughs> <laughs> I, had, I had gone to memphis the week before and we had gotten so drunk and i just would <clears throat> spent the whole day just waiting for it to be five o'clock so i could start drinking i was like you know what five. and i was off the stern show and i had way too much fucking free time <laughs> i'm like when are you gonna not drink yeah, you know when you easy. have to get up at four thirty in the morning you know you couldn't go you know you'd still get pretty crazy pretty often but um at least that was some kind of governor. I mean, that's the Stern yeah, Show was, saved no, my was, life. It was 15 years that I had to be somewhere every yeah. morning, you know. But uh, I, I just was done. And and I have no idea how or why. I didn't go to AA or anything. I just, and everybody said, well, then you didn't have a problem. You I'm like, trust me, I had a fucking oh, yeah. problem. And no big, like, uh, bottom. You didn't reach this point where it was like, oh, I got to yeah. go. You just decided I, at that moment that was it. Well, we got... We 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 were at that party, but we were we were separated, you know. You we, took we, stock of yourself. Yeah, no, well, you know, <laughs> I moved so in. yourself up by your bootstraps. I moved to the house by myself. I quit drinking, got divorced, uh, quit the show. I mean, there was so much wrong that you know it, it was such a fucking major hiccup that like who the fuck knew? You How know? long after you quit the show did you quit drinking? Uh, what is it? A couple months. Oh, like, was that I quit close. in March. Well, well obviously, but I knew I had to quit right away. And obviously, the show made you drink. <laughs> well, you know, it's one of those things that I got divorced, but everybody, oh, Nancy left Jackie because he left the show. You know, we were, we were going to be split up years before that, but there was no way I was going to go through a divorce and be on the show. Oh, my God. You know, I would have been just, just too brutal. Hey, you getting any fresh pussy? You know, no. you know. Uh, yeah, yeah. And, uh,. So when you and I know Howard. I had to quit, but but uh, you know that's a tough thing, and you know it's a, it's in the back of your mind. It's like so, the little guy back there going, you know, one of these days, because I quit for a year, like in 1990 or something, and I said eh, I could quit any time. Now I know I could quit any time. I said, wait, Jackie, that was ten fucking years ago. <laughs> yeah. You know, did you have withdrawals? No, I I didn't go through anything. Nothing. Nothing. I didn't have a problem. Then. Yeah, but you know, <laughs> and that's what everybody says. And I'm like, all right, you know. But I and when I tell tell myself I didn't have a problem, I say that's my way of trying to sneak myself back into. Yeah. Oh, good, I mean, you know, just yeah. Uh, one beer. That's all. It's so funny. I was, <laughs> I was at a New Year's Eve party a couple of years after I quit, and I was at a New Year's Eve party out in the Midwest somewhere, and some girl was standing there, and everybody was drunk, and somebody took champagne. And she had a very low cut uh, and a lot of cleavage, and somebody poured champagne down her cleavage Jesus. without even thinking, oh, not going for the with... booze. I I licked the champagne between the tits just without even thinking, oh. and all every cell in my body is like, "Whoa, we're drinking again! We're wow. drinking again!" Because <laughs> I wasn't thinking in terms of the booze; I was just being outrageous. Oh, it, man. Like, it was like Popeye with the spinach. Like, <laughs> oh, you know. wow, fuck, oh, shit. But yeah, we always drank it, you know. Yeah, that was part of like just driving around. Uh, I had a 1961 God. Chrysler Imperial, which was the year of the. Remember, the fins got bigger and bigger and bigger, <laughs> and that was when they topped out. It was just the ugliest, biggest baby blue car with a, a, 
the trunk was big enough that you could have a fucking orgy in it. <laughs> and, and there was a back shelf, and we actually had a plastic bus box from Pipe and Rock Country Club there. And the thing, there was a, it was a fancy car, and it was a thing, it was old, but it was a fancy car, and there was a thing in the back that pulled down, a, an armrest. And we ripped out the leather and ripped a hole in the cardboard, and we'd put beer on ice in the bus box. We called it our James Bond. And we'd go out and park the car and drink, and then reach through the thing to get beer, and you know. Mm -hmm. And you put your empties in there, too? Uh, no, cool. toss them out the window. Oh, toss them out the know, window, yeah. Well, you know, we were idiots. You know? the, beer, the beer would be in the trunk of the car, and you would be we, able to And reach. we got pulled over one time, and the cop was like, you know, we're parking in the middle of nowhere, and, and where's the beer? And, right. and one of the guys freaked out and said it's it's in the back and uh -huh. bob bishop and the guy opened it and you but you couldn't see it the trunk was so big and it was a shelf he said what are you a wise guy and yeah. there was no it was like we got away with it once wow. it was like incredible <laughs> it's it's not a believable story but if you see it you know i never think nowadays it's the you got the internet you could google it, it's 61 chrysler imperial and see how fucking huge you know Deal. That's one of the last things I would ever yeah. Google. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but, just, but I'm saying it's a real good thing for uh, verifying oh, stories, yeah. you know. Yeah. But yeah, drinking and driving, of course. That's what you did. Like I, I remember driving. I was going to the um, Patchogue uh, uh, Marina out there to catch a boat over hmm. uh, to the uh, to Fire Island, and I had a case of beer on my passenger seat. And I'm just taking cans from it, <laughs> popping it, yeah, drinking them, and I got pulled over for speeding on the expressway. Oh. And uh, the cop actually gave me a breathalyzer. He did? And I, I think I, I blew like a point seven, and and I think drunk legally was, was one at that Right, at that right, point. right, right. It was a point, point eight. Um, and he goes, yeah, yeah, I goes, I could hold you here a little longer and make you do this again to see if, you know, you've been, because you've been drinking. He goes, but uh, I'll let you go. Go ahead. And I had a case of beer in the passenger seat. I'm drinking as I'm speeding down the expressway. And he's like, all right, go ahead. Now forget about it. Is the act of having beer on ice illegal in itself? Or do you no, have to no, be you can have it. It can't in, be open. In there. It just can't be an open okay. container. And, and, you know, of course, I, I had that. I never gave thought to, like, all right, if it's empty, you could stash it under the seat or something. Right. But if you have half a beer and you get pulled over, I where are you putting this? Oh. You just never thought about it. It was like, oh, I'm not. I won't get pulled over. Yeah. You know, in the '60s, it was crazy. I mean, they'd pull you over and you would roll the window down. The cop go, Oh, Jesus Christ, <laughs> yeah, man! What are you you, doing? Can you get this thing home? You know, <laughs> yeah, wow. yes. it was unbelievable. Yes. You know, I, 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 I'm fine. I'm fine. Okay, yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> try, <laughs> try fast so you get there quick. <laughs> it wasn't even a law in the books until like. What, like 25 years ago, right? Yeah, Before I, that? I don't, I yeah, don't they, know if they it never was really a long... We got through the Seriously. 80s, too. With yeah, some, they just didn't give a crazy fuck. stuff. <laughs> what did you have to do back then for them to <laughs> you actually You really had to bring in. in. Yeah, you had to be like drunk and kill someone. Just and plowing yeah. over One fucking of the groups greatest. of children. Take a shot at Hoover. <laughs> you talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> and even that, they're like, well, uh, whatever. You talk uh, about... Let you get away. I remember I came home from college one Christmas or one summer, and it was quite... Quarter to three, the drinking, the, it, the bars used to open, be open until three. And in the late Water. 60s, the bars were packed until they threw you out. Oh, yeah, Nowadays, yeah. I drive through Oyster Bay at 12 o'clock at night, and the place is uh, on yeah, Friday. Town, it's a ghost, town. a ghost town. I'm like, what? where is everybody? What's going on? And Because in the old days, so here I come home from college, and it's quarter to three. And we're at the, the local the homestead in Oyster Bay. We're at the mm -hmm. restaurant, oh, sure. and it's quarter to three. And I said, hey, you know, we better line them up. And they said, what are you talking about? And I said, you know, come on, it's quarter to three. You know, you, you line up your drinks because the bar Last is going to close. Call, yeah. And they said, no, no, no. They, they changed the law. I said, what are you talking about? They, they changed the law to four o'clock. And I said, what fucking legislator <laughs> sat there and said, all right, these guys get drunk till three in the morning. You know what? They do have an outside chance of making it home alive. <laughs> Let's change the law to four o'clock in the That's morning. That's true. It's absurd. They, they moved it back a fucking hour. Yeah. I, they had to have changed. They changed the law. Yeah. Some of those laws, uh, we, we always talk about the strippers. Yeah. Uh, whenever you get strippers that, because uh, they have full nude in some places, but Long Island, it's always the bottom and topless. Uh, oh. You know, you never see any pussy. Occasionally, it's some of the sleazier joints, but it's illegal and yeah, shit like you gotta that. Got to go to Jersey. Yeah, yeah. Mm. The, but they made a law, and and you have to know when that law is made that it's made for good, because there's not one guy that's going to run on the platform of, and we're going to get the fucking panties off of these strippers. You're going to see some <laughs> pussy like, if I'm yeah, elected. Yeah. You better really think about those laws because there's no taking that it's, one back. It's gone forever. It's, it's gone. You're never forever. seeing pussy on Long Island in a strip club. It just ain't going to happen. <laughs> really? Because no politician.
politician can run on that platform. And, oh. and there's so many laws. I vote for them. There's yeah. laws like you can have full naked girls if you don't have booze, but if yeah, you have yeah. booze, you can't. Uh, and then you can send people out to buy your own bottle of booze it, in some place. Is it a bad thing that we can't see the pussies though? Long Island strip club. Yes, mm. it is bad. No. I don't care. Uh, I would rather. I don't some, care. There were some rough fucking strippers the, on Long Island. Your eyes. The day you shift on a week. Uh, fucking the brass monkey or fucking. Uh, down at uh, Frogs in, in Smithtown. There's Fro nobody in the Frogs. first three rows. I think. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to get too close. I'd pump up my beer. Wow. I would put my hands That's over my I'm beer. Talking. And it would be like I would, I would go up on my elbows like I was getting closer to get a better look. Really? But I was covering the top of my beer because she was walking on the bar. Yeah. And I didn't want any fucking crabs or whatever falling into I my beer. I used to order a beer in a clothespin. I'm clothes away from my <laughs> <wrangle. laughs> yeah. It was terrible. Meat curtains. These girls would go by... But if, and it was always uh, uh, when, when, I, when I was broke. <laughs> I'd go into a tit bar, grilled broke. cheese and bologna. Oh god! Uh, <laughs> and, and you'd have you'd have to you know you'd have to put some money up. The beers were expensive and shit. But I didn't have a lot of money, so you'd have to sit next to the guy that had a stack of bills, right? Right. Because the girls would get in front of him and oh, do okay. the fucking dance and shit, and you'd kind of you know. Mm. You, 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 you sap off of him, right. sponge off of his oh, yeah, dollars. Because sure. you're seeing everything. I can give a shit if she's making eye contact with me. That's, Who that's cares? a very good point. Long Island yeah. whore. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Ronkonkoma. What's the name of that place? Bird's Place Birds. in Ronkonkoma. Oh, that's wow. where all the motorcycle um, guys went. Yeah, oh, and they, they would do anything there. They'd, yeah, pull, the, was... they'd pull the fucking G-string aside and just show oh, yeah, fuck. The carousel, right? Harry Bush. Carousel. The carousel is still open. Still wow. Is that right? I've been Jericho. down there a couple of, I was. I think the last time I was there, I was... Uh, it was... Uh, <laughs> Christmas Eve at my uh, aunt and uncle's house, <laughs> and, and I was getting hammered there, and and they live like off of uh, like Cedar Road over there in uh, uh, Elwood, and I'm driving back home to Nassau County, and I'm I'm like, I wonder if the carousel's open. <laughs> Christmas fucking Eve, they're open. <laughs> I go in there, Christmas I'm half Eve. in the bag. Christmas Eve, and, and just to see who's in the strip club at Christmas Eve. Sad strippers. <laughs> it's yeah. like, you oh. and a bunch of Jews. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <it's> exactly. <laughs> the place. Girls are sitting on menorahs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Giving change of a dollar back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's got one of those ice cream men. <laughs> Could <Ka -ching. laughs> I have change? <laughs> oh, talk about quick. Did I tell you the Hungry Bear story last time? <laughs> we'll make plenty uh, in here. The hung oh, That's this is, this is the, a horrible <laughs> performer story. It's like two days before Christmas, hmm. and I used to play my guitar and tell my dirty jokes, and I was really horrible. I was trying to quit the band, but I didn't make the move to comedy yet, so I'm working at this place, The Hungry Bear, which is a single storefront in Huntington, and there's a Scottish bartender, and there's like two or three drunks at the bar, and I'm at the other end playing my songs and telling my dirty jokes, but it's like two days before Christmas. Anybody with any kind of family or heart at all is Christmas shopping and buying trees and doing everything, and there's a couple of lonely drunks and the bartender and I'm at the other end, and I'm trying to be cheery, and I'm playing a song, telling a joke, playing a song, and the guy says something to me, and I gave him the exact perfect straight line. I still want to shoot myself. I'm playing, singing, telling a joke, playing, singing, telling a joke. I'm in between jokes, and the bartender says... Jack, they want you outside. And I said, who? He said, everybody. Swear to God. Oh, that's a good one. Oh, 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 oh. Oh. Softball. I still don't like telling that story. Oh, that's a great so one. Oh, 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 that motherfucker. So so what about the, so the tender funny. trap still open? Down uh, yeah, there? I think the trap is still open next to the, the uh, next to the uh, radiator place. Those guys had it easy. Yeah, my friend's diner. They had it easy, man. Lunchtime oh, man. at the tender trap right behind where they worked. Yeah, it's nothing worse than walking out of a strip club when it's still light out. Oh, and you impressive. fucking you feel like Bella Lugosi. You just yeah, you've read it You mean like you've been there flame. all night through the morning? Well, no, 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 lunchtime. Like know, lunchtime. We used to go for for work. Oh. Like we take lunch lunches. lunch breaks and just like leave, go to the strip club, oh, and then you realize like it's three in the afternoon. We've been there for three hours, we're hammered, but we gotta go back to the job to pack the tools up. And you come out, and, and your, your pupils, you hear them slam shut. Wow. They're just oh. fucking, you're, you're, you're kind of drunk. What, and, what was the movie? Brew, uh, Brew, uh, Brew, Brew Breaker. Breaker. Yeah. Oh, when he got out of Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it was that's like what, getting out of the box. That's what it sounds like. <laughs> yeah. oh. Solitary in the hole. In the hole. <laughs> that's what it was like, literally. Yeah. Oh.
That play, yeah, but, we used to go to scores with the Stern Show, and we go there like you know at eleven o'clock after we got off the air sometimes, <laughs> and you, you get really drunk and crazy and go c carry on and just smell of uh, stripper, stripper, and then you and walk out glitter. and the in the sun it was just wrong. <laughs> yeah, it was just yeah. wrong. Yeah, there's you know? something just wrong about leaving when it's about light out. Being drunk and smelling like <laughs> yeah, that. Yes. You just described our show. <laughs> <laughs> we, we talk about that. Yeah. Yeah. We do all this unbelievable like you just know it's wrong and it hits you when you you go outside when you start walking to the park. Parking garage, you got like, oh, why was, why was yeah. you see a woman why walking with so a mean? three year old, you yeah. know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Hi, good morning. Still have dried blood in your fingers. <laughs> 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 We've had some stories, Jackie. Uh, yeah. We almost got fired two weeks after spending two and a half years on the beach. Yeah, that was a bad one. We had a drunk, naked girl crying outside uh, our studio on 57th Street. We were literally back on the job for only a few weeks. And Jimmy and I went to went to a diner afterwards. And he looks at me and he's like, what are we doing? <laughs> yeah, What's wrong right with back. us? Well, wait a minute. Why was the girl crying? What had to, it was two it? girls that came in with a band. The band. It, it, it's smart on the band's part. They're like, hey, we're going to bring in some naked girls to do crazy shit if you allow I, us to come in and play a little our, music. Our you know band, the deal. Yeah. You guys Ooh, done okay. that. Yeah. I fucked and, one of the girls without a bag. Oh. I took an Asian chick. I took her into that room and and I banged her out of bag. And uh, the other one got really drunk and, and walked down a Fifty Seventh Street. And and we had a Jägermeister machine that worked well when we were at NEW. So we're frozen, like frozen Jäger, yeah. man. And uh, after sitting out wow. two years, three right. months, we're like, yeah, we should just bring back the Jägermeister machine. Let's take right up where we left and, off. And let's not uh, <laughs> learn <laughs> anything from our fucking <laughs> hiatus. And, and did an ambulance show up? Paramedic it, showed up. Yeah. There was an ambulance. We had to bring girls through a uh, back way to a loading dock, and because because then the press Didn't was on. Did we shut the wiffle ball bat up? But they're pussy too. Oh, oh, I love the asshole. Oh, oh. Yeah. yeah, this was it like, was like a we rape. were barely back on the radio. <laughs> we we, and we and sure were full of gusto. And, and it goes back to wow. the, the strip club story. It's like nine in the morning. Normal people are are going into the same building with their suits and ties to work, and there's a girl, no joke, completely naked, crying on the sidewalk. <laughs> what <Whoops. laughs> great though? But in, yeah, that's really super is. radio. Oh, but the girls were pretty fucked up before they got there. Oh yeah, they were, yeah. They, How do you think I they felt? They I had a bat shoved in my ass on a satellite radio show. <laughs> on a Tuesday. <laughs> That's humiliating. On a Tuesday morning. Uh, uh, they're not even on the whole platform yet. <laughs> yeah. And then more humiliating, fucked by Jackie, you. you ever, <laughs> and they weren't even in the band. They weren't even in the band. They were helping out. Yes. You ever have any of those? Oh, uh, E-Rock's telling me it was the Wednesday before Thanksgiving, so yes. we were, we were uh, back on for maybe a month and a half oh, at that point. Geez, wow. a bunch of yeah. assholes. And we almost got fired. Uh, and the press was uh, sniffing around because the call came on the radio, naked crying girl outside the studio. Do you think you secretly wanted to be suspended again? No, we or were just You missed stupid. doing the no, show, we, right? we were excited. We, met, we, we wanted, wanted to pick up where jump we, in with right, both yeah. feet. And just, it was satellite, so we're like, all right, we, yeah. we're going to show you what yeah, we can do with is, this shit. Rape is good here. I, mean, yeah, yeah. I remember when you guys would be on the cover of the Daily News and the Post like oh, on a yeah. weekly basis. <laughs> it was great. Those are great <laughs> fucking just, shows, was, uh, man. Ralphie yeah. May saved our ass. The cover of the post. Yeah, that was great. In, unless I, I had to be the good thing that rhymed with Opie. Oh. I was always dopey. <laughs> dopey. Opie oh. and Dopey, do it again. <laughs> <laughs> like, nothing rhymes with Schmanthony. <laughs> Hack journalist. Yeah, yeah. yeah they had Ocean with and foam. Dopey. Yeah. Yeah, right. yeah, white with foam, motherfucker. <laughs> Put the it other, in the drawer. The other part of that story... George has a mirror. Yeah. Sean, and, <laughs> Sean and George is helping us out. The other part of that story, Ralphie May was in that day you know he was plugging a gig and we were we were in deep shit and the cop recognized ralphie may and ralphie may was actually uh, able to help us out a bit instrumental yes. yeah he actually yeah really helped that day. really i'll never yeah. forget ralphie may for that man yeah. holy shit he, <laughs> george <laughs> fucked the stripper is he the guy is he the you go now guy the chinese all you can eat, or is John that the other fat guy? Oh, John right? <laughs> the fat guy. They would both hate you for Otto. messing that up. Fat you hear what disappointment right. to your parents. You hear what happened to Ralphie <laughs> May in Guam? What happened? The, to Ralphie May in Guam? They nah. worship him. <laughs> <laughs> they, made him they made him king. <laughs> <laughs> he was, he was he had a mirror. in a B-17 yeah. and dropped yeah. on Japan. Yeah. <laughs> they started, mirror, build, they they started building settlements on him. <laughs> <laughs> I claim you for the Queen of Spain. <laughs> he became an atoll. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Put he a whiffle ball lava. bat in his head. <laughs> we get any more fat jokes? Yeah. <laughs> Why did I go with the question yeah. there? Uh, his blood uh, type is ragu. Ralphie's in Guam with pot on him, it yeah. decides it's a good idea to pet police dogs at the airport. Oh my god! It's, a, it's one of the greatest stories to come out in years. When you don't know that story no. either, pet the police dog. You must too? have been uh, doing Lena when we uh, brought it up. Yeah. yeah, two months ago he got arrested. 
in Guam because he had pot on him, and, and he sees a cute dog and decides to pet the fucking dog That's at the airport. That's a stupid, stupid How dumb man. is that? <laughs> that, is, that is beautiful. Oh, it's so dumb we're it's thinking so dumb he did it on purpose. How long was he in jail for? I don't know how it all ended. Do you know we were on? Blind policeman. Yeah, we're looking Jesus. it up right now. But uh, Wow. I didn't hear that. You didn't that is that stupid. Yeah. yeah, what a dope. He's going to be on the show locked up obese. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Did you guys ever feel like you were going to get fired and you didn't? Fat. Were you oh, skated one? <laughs> well, you know what? I, I was too low level. You know what I mean? The, the firing. No, but you're, in the sh you're no, on I the mean, show and you're like, holy shit, this can't be good. You know, it... Like the but FCC all... stuff that happened, you know, that was always fun because the FCC th stuff would happen afterwards, and it was nothing like seeing your jokes in a law oh, brief. Those hmm. are the funniest. We talk about that when uh, you read what you said completely out of context. <laughs> well, the first thing, the first thing that we got the FCC thing for, they say here you, you should read this. You know, we've been cited, and it, and the first thing was, was Susan Berserkowitz. We wrote, me and Fred wrote the song. Uh, I gotta be me, but it was I love sodomy, and it was like you know, down <laughs> on my knees, shoehorning. begging you, please, I love sodomy, and it's typed out in a lawyer brief. And you just piss yourself. Yeah. It's hysterical. That's in a law book somewhere now. Yeah, when yeah. you see your name Wait. and then your comments, and you're like, did I say that? Wow. Oof. You get it, and you would get, it, you would get ideas from all the other assholes getting in trouble with the <laughs> yeah. FCC. It's like we're not learning anything. I'm, we're gonna fucking steal that fucking yeah, line. It's, <laughs> it's so crazy. The, the FCC can still tamper with you, even though you're allowed to curse on radio. This no, still, satellite they can't. They can't? No. You can say anything? Yeah, it was, yeah. Well, it's Pretty a whole much. different world, though. I, the FCC, I yeah. don't worry about at all, even if I was on regular radio. It's, it's the people of running the radio stations yeah, you can I worry about way things. more than the FCC. Right. Yeah. Yeah. The special interest groups and all the fucking pussies that run the radio stations. Yeah, you don't want to incite yeah. the worse, wrong people. You know? Way worse than the FCC. Right. Really? Yeah, at the end of our careers on uh, commercial radio, that was that was a joke. The FCC... That, we didn't yeah, worry about FCC, the FCC didn't matter. You can say cut, but you can't say Jesus. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We were yeah, yeah, we worried yeah. about the Asians, the special interest groups, and all that. Hmm. Those were the ones getting people fired, not the FCC. So, whatever. Wow. Mm. Yeah. Oh, God. We don't need day. that type of humor anyway, the type that denigrates other people. There's yeah, a lot of ways please. to have fun. No. If you have to do that, trash talking. Yeah, we don't need that type of stuff. <laughs> no. <laughs> you know, I, I Michigan State, I was a... Uh, a um, student assistant for a while, which meant you led the, you know, they had the, the lectures on the television in the classrooms because it was such a huge university, and you'd be in charge of plugging in the television, turning on the show, you know, with the professors doing the, the main lecture, and then you'd turn off the TV and lead the, you know, lead the discussions at the end. So the first day of class, everybody has to hand in their little thing, their name, and blah, 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 blah. Mm. So this one guy, and I never got to meet the guy, but it said name, address, major, blah, blah, blah. And what's your goal in life? You know, stuff like that. So the, guy, the guy's name and address and says, what's your major? And he says, it's none of your business. And then and I'll never forget it. said, what's your goal in life? He said, I, I want to rid the world of racial prejudice and chinks. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I gave that to Peter Bales. He's been using his act for 30 years. <laughs> racial prejudice and chinks. Fuck. <laughs> it's so stupid. Yeah, so I'm very excited about his Stress Factory uh, Stress Factory gig starting tonight. Two shows tomorrow and two shows Saturday with uh, the judging of the Halloween costume contest. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, um, so yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> usually he would give me a Sunday when the next day was a legal holiday. He always used me for these odd nights, but he finally get. Why can't you just give me a fucking weekend like any other stand up? Why am this? Why yeah. am I this aberration? You know, <laughs> every, every comics, every great, comedian I've what worked a great with. Word. In, in the last 15 years has used the word cunt and cocksucker right the mc uses it you know but you know why am i like this freak that you know can't work yeah. where i want to you know same thing at caroline's lewis always has me doing some weird shit like i have to host or something just give me a weekend put two guys before me let me do my act do your, do your fucking yeah, deal yeah. 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 it's about fucking time yeah yeah, well, Vinny is weird. I don't know. He's a weird guy. Yeah. But if you show up like that with that with that red pen in your pocket, you're going to show them that you mean business. <laughs> and the, I've been and staring at that for two hours. Now, a politician gave me this to me on the platform coming in. Who? Uh, McGreevy. He said, pull this out of my asshole, sir. <laughs> I got <Smell> an appointment. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> McGreevy. Yeah. Uh, never old, though. Oh, never oh, let oh, that yeah. down, <laughs> Willie. No. Oh. Uh, it has been bothering me for a while. Really? Oh, yeah. <laughs> what? I'm bothered uh, by the passport. I always write ideas down. It's like, so prominent. When you guys like are, are talking on, on the way in, I'm trying to like think of shit. And I, yeah, I'm going to bring it up three hours later. What'd you have? Now you got to read it. Didn't let it bother me. I went back an hour. I didn't get it. Adam, come on. Now you got to read it. Now it's funny. Now it's funny. I was going to talk about. 
Well, I have new management now, my friend James D. Benedetto, and I said the first thing I want is I want to get on the Jerry Lewis telethon because, you know, Jerry's getting up there, and I, I loved, I grew up on his movies, and he said to me, I, I couldn't get you on a telethon even if you had the disease. <laughs> <laughs> That's hysterical. Yeah. That's very good. Come on, you gotta have what else? Oh, but, to come, come on, on. Come on Otto. share. Come I was on, gonna Shia. talk about the bathroom tiles and Trish and her fucking thing. Um, legalization of pot. Oh, Pepperidge Farm is gonna start growing pot when they legalize pot and do commercials. For Pep Pepperidge Farm, remember those good J's your mom used to roll when you were a kid? Pepperidge Farm remembers. Brings you Acapulco gold. I won't be doing that this Why? Time. Why? You should do oh, that right before the, the oh, Halloween contest. Yeah. Oh, your mother's cunt. Larry! Larry! Gonna find your bread jokes dead in the hallway, Larry. <laughs> it stinks when I try and write something new, doesn't it? No, it doesn't. Oh, that's great. That was just... Uh, there's nothing better than you with a pen. I love yes. how Otto gets. He's gets his fucking He's going to leave himself. That's why he's got the... Did you see when he was like a half, about halfway into the Pepperidge Farm <laughs> thing? He just wanted to leave. He, lost he wanted to fucking leave. That's it. Uh, and it was I'll, hysterical. I'll be on the next elevator to the lobby. <laughs> <laughs> when a joke bombs, he leaves the country. I know. There's a train leaving for New Brunswick in 10 minutes. <laughs> be under it. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite part. Was, it was he said unprepared Jew with a pen and a passport? <laughs> yeah. uh, I name names. Oh, 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 oh that God. pen makes me sick. <laughs> <laughs> I it's been enraging me for three hours. <laughs> Vote for me! Oh, shut up. <laughs> Pocket protector. You know, you stabbed him in the throat. So oh, here's the other talk. You talk about the girl with the braces, uh, Charlie, something about the, the stripper. Chair, yeah, yeah, the porn chair. Yeah, I was going to say, if you get a blowjob from a girl with braces, your cock will look like a totem pole. <laughs> <laughs> I, I came up with that in the car, and she was just like, all right, shut up. <laughs> you shut up. That's good. Make you, you cry. Up. Yeah, I'll make you cry. Does she still laugh at your stuff, Otto? Or? I make her laugh all uh, the time, but yeah. That's good. Yeah. It's hard to the act, though, because the chicks see the act after a while. Yeah. It's like, you know. I, I don't, when she's at a show, I feel like I'm going to, like, hold back on saying something really heinous. I'll some edit myself somehow. Even though she knows I don't mean what I say, right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to somehow... Think about her sensibility, and it'll affect me somehow. You know, that's wonderful. Very wow. depressing. <laughs> that was very deep. Yeah, you don't have a razor on you. <laughs> no, no. And Jackie's going to be at uh, Uncle Vinny's Comedy Club, Staten got, Island, oh, one okay. show Saturday, the thirtieth. I got to tell you, it gets to the point where I, like every word is like Niagara Falls. Slowly, I turn. You talk about tiles oh. at Michigan State in the bathroom in the lobby. You know those. You know the white four-inch tiles in the bathroom, and you go in to take a crap. And way down on in the grout between two of the tiles was little, little, tiny, tiny letters. And I laughed at this for oh, fucking shit. 10 years. Here's all the tiles. And way down in the grout between the tiles, you bent over and it said, you are now shitting at a 45 degree angle. <laughs> 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 it's just fucking funny every time. Awesome. I, every time I hear the word tiles, I just fucking smile. It's just so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those dopey things. Those I, did, I remember the first time, and it's an old thing, but the first time I ever uh, was standing <laughs> at a urinal pissing and saw it, don't look up here, the joke's in your hand. Funny uh, every time. I was fucking laughing so <laughs> hard, man. <laughs> and, 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 and now, now this is a guy who doesn't know how to follow up a story with a good story. I was, I was pissing one time, and it was like, Bunch of dicks and stuff on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> One guy who has an awful story, everybody's great stories. <laughs> Is that kind of a lost art? Like, I, you go into bathrooms. Uh, well, these some days, guy did a book really on graffiti see a in lot bathroom. of, um, yeah, just a, a lot, lot of, of dicks. fuck you, this one sucks yeah, dick. And, a lot yeah. of penises. You know, shit, now that you get brought up on fucking human resources yeah. charges, if you're, uh, mm. If you write some th something about some broad... I'm black with 12 <laughs> inches. Great. How big's your cock? You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, you get some racist shit, and then it's like, fuck you, motherfucker, I'll kick your ass. It was like a, a battle. Right. Would be, uh, it was the original blog. Yeah, 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 yeah. right. original yeah. blogging. All yeah, the different blogging. handwriting, different... different that's funny. funny. That's, that's, that's really blog. funny. It's exactly your web page is a fucking partition in a exactly. shitter. Hey, there's <laughs> a hole drilled in the middle of my web page. Me being here. 4 p.m. Friday. Julio yeah. sucks. Yeah. Shit like that, right? <laughs>
Yeah, someone did a book called, I think, Bathroom Art or something, where they had all yeah, yeah. photos of uh, graffiti in bathrooms. So, so, was was oh, so it was great. So it was great. Yeah, so a lot idea. in, uh, p p like, some of the clubs, uh, when it w like, backstage at, uh, in the dressing room at CBGB's and shit like that. It was just a mess of, of graffiti and uh, but some, a lot of the clubs. But sometimes it's too artsy yeah. and, and too smart. Like, nah, there's nothing like being that. in a truck stop where it's really <laughs> written by fucking morons. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, I really need to take this shit. Oh, so is your mom. You know, it's like <laughs> yeah. just down home. No thought to it. No, f no nothing. <laughs> Hey, we Great. got someone who wants to stump uh, the joke man. Oh, oh boy. Wow. Yeah, this is, uh, this is uh, Jackie's big bit here. Uh, Johnny Cleveland, you want to stump the joke man? Yeah, what's up, guys? I want to toss one out to Jackie here. Toss right. one Jackie. out. Yeah, let's hear it. I'm going to toss it. Yeah. Hey, uh, what do you call a fat broad with breast cancer? A fat broad with breast cancer? I don't know. Voluptuous. What's that? Voluptuous. We heard you. <laughs> you heard it's you. not just me. Funny. What's that, no, sir? It's not funny. <laughs> Let's try another one because the fat fuck in the other room didn't know what we were doing. Ah, <laughs> you dumb piece of uh, shit. Uh, Rock, were you not paying attention? There was no one on the phone, so I was checking the phone. Oh, that's time I catch you napping at the board. <laughs> <Where's> <laughs> yeah. I'm going to take a personal interest in making the listeners suffer. <laughs> listeners. Worst timing. I want you to take a look at that fat piece of shit. <laughs> Worst timing ever. <laughs> ever on this show. I have no Worst idea what's going on. Exactly. Opie and Anthony. This is the Opie and Anthony Show.